Hey guys, we made a video about two or three years ago about Facebook in Japan, and at that time Facebook had become pretty popular here. It had taken off here a bit later than it had in the rest of the world, but like with most things, once it started to become popular here, it really went off because everybody jumped on it. Everyone here likes to follow the trends and the fashions and be on top of what's going on, so it really went off. The social media platform that, that was the biggest at that time was Line, and Line is still the most popular platform. Uh, it's a Japanese site, so it's all Japanese friendly. Um, it works really well on smartphones, and most Japanese people access the internet from their smartphones and from their, their smart pads and things, so Line's a good one for that. Um, it has a whole heap of features like that that are really popular here. Uh, another one's Mixi. Mixi's a Japanese one as well that you can only get on through invite. And it's probably one of the main reasons those two are most popular is because they understand, because they're Japanese sites, they understand the Japanese culture and the Japanese people's way of thinking. And Facebook in a lot of ways really doesn't fit very well with Japanese people. And that's why what's happened is it's peaked and, it, and at one stage there it really peaked and everybody was asking everybody, are you on Facebook, are you on Facebook? And friend requests would come from people that you didn't know and it would be it would be friends of friends. And so what was happening, because the Japanese group mentality thing, what would happen is you'd be part of a group and there'd be other members of the group that might be in some, particularly I'm thinking of a martial arts group and, and there's members of the martial arts group but based in other cities and and what would happen is the friends in our group here would you'd friend them and then and then other people that you didn't know would friend you and and everybody and this big frenzy of friending and because then there's other things too like high school students and university students and workmates and and so it just it just went off and everybody's in this big friending frenzy and so it's really common to see a Japanese person's Facebook page and they'll have four or five hundred friends friends Facebook friends, four or five hundred of them, quite common, quite common. Uh, be probably nobody that we know would have less than 100, 150, 200. Most of them have 300, 400, particularly younger people, uh, high school students, university students, you know, people in their early 20s. Most of them would have four, five, six, seven hundred friends, friends on Facebook. So it sort of extends and extends. And that's one of the things that has is killing it because there's a couple of complications for Japanese people as far as Facebook is concerned. One of them is you've got to use your real name and that makes a lot of Japanese people really uncomfortable. For that reason there are a lot of Japanese people who didn't get into Facebook when, when all the other people did and they just didn't want to because they didn't want to be putting their name on the internet. Because there's a whole heap of reasons. One is there's sort of a natural shyness with a lot of Japanese people. There's also a, a real privacy thing, a paranoia about privacy. It's funny because, again, it's the paradoxes and contrasts, the contradictions thing. In some ways, in Japan, there's a lot of things that, that maybe are private in other countries that are not private here, and there's some things that are, are sort of open and public in other countries that are not open and public here. So one example of that would be relationships, maybe in another country. You know, you could post a picture of yourself with your new girlfriend or new boyfriend on Facebook. You know, that would be quite a, probably quite a normal and acceptable thing to do. Whereas that's less likely to happen here. Right? Relationships usually, particularly at first, tend to be really private and really quiet. And people aren't real public about it, you know. And a lot of stuff's like that. So first thing is, having your name public on the internet makes a lot of Japanese people uncomfortable. And then actually showing anything personal on Facebook, on the internet, to, to people, uh, makes a lot of Japanese people uncomfortable too. And so what happened was, people got their real names on Facebook, and they went into the big friending frenzy, and friended five, six, seven hundred people, including lots of people, of course, in that five or six, seven hundred people, there's a lot of people they, they barely know, and there's a lot of people they don't know at all because they've friended everybody, friends of friends and friends and friends of friends and have this big frenzy and at the end of it they find suddenly they're feeling really exposed and really public. And then what started to happen, 
And, and this is all generalizations, of course. When you're talking about a society, you have to generalize. We can't talk about everybody individually. I mean, there are some exceptions to this. There are some people who don't care and they put everything on Facebook and here's me with my new boyfriend and here's me in my bikini on the beach and here's me doing this and me doing that. There are some people that do that, of course, but most of them don't. Most of them are really low key. And so the result of this is suddenly everyone gets really paranoid and go, oh shit, everyone's watching what I'm doing. So then what happens is, what we see now when we look at our friends' Facebook pages, uh, they'll have they'll have their profile picture will be the the back of the head, and hopefully I remembered to put that on this video and show you what that looks like. But but a lot of them will have the back of their head looking at a sunset, or the back of their head looking at fireworks, or the back of their head looking at uh, some flowers or something, because they don't want their face on Facebook. Ironically, sort of misses missing the point somewhere along the line, isn't it? But but they, yeah, they don't want their face on Facebook, so they put the back of their head on Facebook. Well, they won't have their their head at all. They'll have they'll have their foot on the beach, or they'll have uh, a favourite a favourite ramen dish. You know, some food will be their will be their profile picture. Um, and then quite often, particularly now, what we find is we'll look at our friends' Facebook pages and they won't have posted anything for the last two years because they just went, oop, and stopped posting things. Or uh, what they'll do is they'll just post pictures of scenes of some place or uh, food is a really common one. So you'll often see a picture of someone's lunch. You know, they've gone to a restaurant somewhere and bought something tasty and, and there's a picture of it on the, on, the, on the page. So personal stuff just doesn't get posted anymore. So what people are actually doing and what they're doing, all that, all the personal stuff, you know, what they're doing in their lives and where they're working now and, and all that sort of stuff it is, all sort of, is all sort of private now so that they don't post anything about, about it at all. Which is sort of, the result of this of course is that Facebook's sort of dying off here now. I mean it's still, you know, there's 127 million people here so it's still enough people using it to keep it going. Um, some exceptions to this too. Uh, one is people who interact with foreign people a bit will sometimes keep using Facebook because you can only get onto Mixi if you're invited by another person on Mixi and Mixi and Line are both only in Japan so usually people outside Japan don't use them. So sometimes people who maybe work for a company where they deal with people overseas or for some other reason they have connections overseas outside Japan they might use Facebook a bit but again it tends to be their public face so if it's work associates or something or even just friends of friends outside Japan usually again they're very careful what they post because they don't want to post anything about their relationships and they don't really want to talk about their work at all because they might be giving away some secrets and you know like um, you know the companies here tend to be very secretive or not secretive but very uh, strict about talking about work you know outside work you're not supposed to talk about work or what an asshole the boss is or anything like that so they can't post anything about that can't post anything about co-workers or the boss or what the company's doing or anything um, unless it's approved sort of stuff so there's no relationship stuff no work stuff um, you know family stuff's too personal so you won't see much family stuff so the end result is that, that Facebook you know, the, the Facebook that you see in Japan, the Facebook from people in Japan tends to be a bit a bit lame, you know, it tends to be a bit lame and predictable. Lots of the backs of heads and lots of... Oh, the other thing they do too is um, if they do have a picture with people in it, quite often what they'll do is they'll, they'll Photoshop it and put um, hearts and stars and things all over all the faces. So here's, here's you know, four, obviously four girls at a table doing this and there'll be a heart over one girl's face and a star over another girl's face and something else over another face. Or they'll pixelate it so that you can't see who it is. Which is sort of, you know, mm. or they'll do, or one or two girls might be like that and the other two you can see the face and it's because those two are the shy ones who don't want their faces on Facebook, you know. So it's sort of funny and again, this is probably gonna to have to be a topic of another video with the, we made a video once talked about the contradictions and paradoxes you know, on one, one, on one hand, the people here are really much paranoid about stuff like that. On the other hand, there's a lot of stuff here with the way we live and, and that sort of thing. That the local people around us and in our groups and organisations and that sort of thing tend to really infringe on our privacy from 
because you know, and particularly work here, um, can really infringe on your privacy in, in comparison to what it does in other countries. But when it comes to things like this, so that's why Line is more popular, Mixi is more popular. Facebook sort of sort of cruising along. The, the, the companies here try and use it a bit because it's good for the companies as well. But again, it tends to be Line and Mixi again for most of the sort of interactive stuff with companies here. So yeah, if you find yourself living in Japan, probably what you'll end up doing is using Line on your smartphone. Is the most common is the most common thing that people do line on the smartphone and then there's really really tight control you know of course there is on, on Facebook as well control over who sees it but it's just the interaction is a lot more uh, conducive to the Japanese way of doing things you know so anyway so there it is that's the Facebook thing so oh yeah so with this is, is a bit of a heads up this might deserve to go on the how-to playlist with this if you do come to Japan and suddenly start receiving friend requests. The other thing is it's very easy to find you. If you're a foreigner in Japan, it's very easy for someone to search your name on Facebook. If you're a foreigner, they know your name and they know which part of Japan you live in. It's very easy to put your name and what prefecture you're in into Facebook and find you straight away. Because there's not that many, you know, there's only a million foreigners in Japan. So there's only so many people with, with the same name. And this happens quite a bit suddenly on Facebook you get a friend request from somebody that you don't know. And if you're a guy, it might be a cute girl, and if you're a girl, it might be a, a handsome guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but um, but it doesn't mean anything, you know? And that's the other thing is that, you know, some the way some people do Facebook is that it usually has a bit of meaning, that it is real, sort of real friends or real family members, but, but here it doesn't mean anything. They're just collecting, and, and just to prove that to yourself, to illustrate that to yourself, if, if you do get a friend request from someone, just have a quick look on their page to see how many friends they've got. And when you see that they've got 600, 700 friends, it, it puts it in perspective, you know? You're not special. <laughs> They're just trying to include you in their, in their world a bit, or, you know, it's just an automatic thing. Let's search for someone on Facebook and, 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 and like them on, friend them on Facebook because that's just what they do. It doesn't mean anything. So, yes. So this probably does deserve to go on the how-to playlist just for that one warning. Don't get excited when the cute girl or the cute pretty boy sends you a, a friend request because it, it doesn't mean anything, okay? You're just number 742. <laughs> anyway, there it was. Facebook in Japan in 2016. More videos coming soon. <laughs>